the, the ultimate question of, of, from physics is, okay, so we have this abstract model of the universe. Why does the universe exist at all? Right? So, you know, we might say there is a, a formal model that if you run this model, you get the universe. Yes. Or the model gives you, you know, a model of the universe, right? You, 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 you run this mathematical thing and the mathematics unfolds in the way that corresponds to the universe. But the question is, why was that actualized? Why does the actual universe actually exist? And um, so this is, this is another one of these humility and in, in, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. is like, can you figure this out? Uh, I have a guess, okay, about the answer to that. And um, my guess is somewhat unsatisfying, but my guess is that it's a little bit similar to Gödel's second incompleteness theorem, which is the statement that from within as an axiomatic theory like piano arithmetic, you cannot from within that theory prove the consistency of the theory. So my guess is that for entities within the universe, there is no finite determination that can be made of the, the, the statement, the universe exists, is essentially undecidable to any entity that is embedded in the universe. Within that universe, how does that make you feel? Is that, <laughs> is that, does that put you at peace that it's impossible? Or do, is it really ultimately frustrating? Well, I think it just says that it's not a kind of question that, you know, it, it's, there are things that it is reasonable. I mean, th there's kinds of, you know, you can talk about hypercomputation as well. You can say, imagine there was a hypercomputer, here's what it would do. So, okay, great, it would be lovely to have a hypercomputer, but unfortunately we can't make it in the universe. Like it would be lovely to answer this, but unfortunately we can't do it in the universe. Um, and you know this is all we have, so to speak. Um, and I think it, it's it's really just a a statement. It's sort of in the end, it'll be a, a kind of a logical, logically inevitable statement. I think. I think it will be something where it is as you understand what it means to have what it means to have a sort of predicate of existence and what it means to have these kinds of things. It will sort of be inevitable that this has to be the case, that from within that universe, you can't establish the reason for its existence, so to speak. You can't prove that it exists and so on. And nevertheless, because of computational reducibility, the future is uh, ultimately not predictable, full of mystery, and that's what makes life worth living. Right. I mean, right. And, you know, it's funny for me because as a, as a pure sort of human being doing what I do, it's, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I like I'm interested in people. I like sort of, the, you know, the whole human experience, so to speak. And yet it's a little bit weird when I'm thinking, you know, it's all hypergraphs down there and it's all just... Uh, it's hypergraphs you know. all the way down. Right. <laughs> it's like and, turtles all the way down. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and, it, and it's kind of, you know, it, it's to me... It is a funny thing because every so often I get this, you know, as I'm thinking about, I think we've really gotten, you know, we've really figured out kind of the essence of how physics works. And I'm like thinking to myself, you know, here's this physical thing. And I'm like, you know, this feels like a very definite thing. Yeah. How can it be the case that this is just some real reference frame of, you know, this infinite creature that that is uh, so abstract and so on? And I kind of, it, it is a, it's a, it's a funny sort of feeling that, that you know, we are, we're sort of, uh, um, it's like, it's in the end, it's just sort of, um, we're just be like happy, we're just stuff. humans type yeah. thing. And, and it's kind of like, but, but we're making, we make things as, it, it's not like we're just a tiny speck. We are, in a sense, the, we are more important by virtue of the fact that, in a sense, it, it's not like there's, there is no ultimate, you know, it's like, we're important because, because, you know, we're here, so to speak, and we're not, it's not like there's a thing where we're saying, um, you know, we are just but one sort of intelligence out of all these other intelligences. And so, you know, ultimately there'll be the super intelligence, which is all of these put together and it'll be very different from us. No, it's actually going to be equivalent to us. And the thing that makes us a sort of special is just the details of us, so to speak. It's not something where we can say, oh, there's this other thing, you know, just you think humans are cool, just wait until you've seen this. Right. You know, it's gonna be much more impressive. Well, no, it's all going to be kind of computationally equivalent. And the thing that, you know, it, it's not gonna be, oh, this thing is, is amazingly much more impressive and amazingly much more meaningful, let's say. No, we're it. 
I mean, that's it's, that's that that's the um, and and the symbolism of this particular moment. So this has been one of the one of the favorite conversations I've ever had, Stephen. It's a huge honor to talk to you, to talk about a topic like this for four plus hours on the fundamental theory of physics, and yet we're just two finite descendants of apes that have to end this conversation because darkness have come <laughs> yes. upon us. Right, and, and we're going to uh, get bitten by mosquitoes and, and all kinds of terrible the things. The symbolism of that, we're talking about the most basic fabric of reality and having to end because of the fact that things end. Um, it's tragic and beautiful, Stephen. Thank you so much. Huge honor. I can't wait to see what you do in the next couple of days and next week, a month. We're all watching with excitement. Thank you so much. Thanks.